to the expense of the Palestinians. And, and, and so, uh, well, then that's where you and I have to part ways because I can't support any country. In fact, what Israel is doing is validating the U.S. Arms Export Control Act and what the United States is doing is violating its own law by providing Israel money to oppress the Palestinians. And under no sense or no circumstance can I support that. Well, but um, uh, uh, that's the assumption that the Palestinians are um, a, a national force and something other than, than a terrorist organization masquerading as, as well, a national except government. That, well, except that we have nothing but history to dispel that foolishness. And if anybody is operating as a uh, terrorist force, it would have to be the, the, the Zionist government in Israel. Well, that, uh, that's most, uh, one of the most, uh, most interesting comments I've heard on this program in a long time. I've, I've come well, then, to, this, then this program should be more interesting. Well, <laughs> I, love well, it. I think I love it just it. I think it just did. <laughs> I've, I've covered uh, let me see four Arab Israeli conflicts, and in all of them, I, I've yet to see where the quote Zionists are, have done anything but the, defend uh, their country uh, against a mass force attempting to exterminate it. Of course, I'm. Um, uh, how should we say, uh, uh, brainwashed since I'm a young kid about this. I've never been a particular friend of Israel, but uh, if you, if in the Middle East you, you look look at the world, and it's funny, we suddenly switch to Israel, and the real story here is the Kurds, which are, um, as, as you, uh, uh, Muslim-oriented, they, they have, they have been uh, an ethnic group, much like the Israelis, uh, unlike the Palestinians, which haven't been uh, a real, real country ever, or have a, a they are mixed people at, at best. And here, and here we have the Kurds who have de demonstrated their ability to govern, to fight, and to, to throw back uh, ISIS in uh, and, and many different places. Yes, we anger Turkey, but so what? The the strong man that's in, in charge right now is not a friend of the United States. I don't think he's a friend of anybody, but that's a different story. Here, here we. The, the important thing is that the United States has, for the first time in eight years, put its weight behind the, uh, someone in in the Middle East capable of upsetting the balance of power and making it possible uh, for peace to reign. The only way peace is going to reign in that area is when the various uh, country, uh, factions, I don't call them countries anymore, have uh, so obliterated each other that the, that the only solution is peace. And the Kurds are the ones, given the right ar uh, armament, who can do it. If, if you look at the uh, Kurdish um, uh, they're not even militia anymore. They're a regular fighting force. And if the and again, all I had go on is this briefing where we, we went into into depth about the Kurdish uh, armed forces. Uh, the only thing they lack is air power. And if um, uh, again, it's uh, somewhat unclear in, the, in today's announcement how much air power is going to be de uh, devoted to them. But if you add air, air power to their ability to and their armor, to knock out armor and their armor, then we're lo we're looking at a whole new force in the Middle East that could drive the, uh, a simple fact. All they have to do is, do is drive south, and they split ISIS in half. And they do that alone. Hook up w w with the uh, to use your expression, the Zionist uh, Israelis. Uh, it suddenly makes uh, ruling uh, uh, ISIS less of a, uh, a threat uh, in the Middle East and maybe relieves the pressure on Saudi Arabia and maybe turns the pressure on uh, Iran. Because you could rest assured, one, uh, the people in Iran are not happy with that decision. Well, uh, Dan Perkins, finish us off on this topic. I want to get to the, the doctor's book, but uh, uh, Dan, go ahead and finish up on this topic, and then we're going to go to the, the, the Paul. Well, I, I find it uh, fascinating listening to the dialogue 
between the two of them. Uh, Don being more sure than and we're having uh, some we're we're we're, ha we're having some trouble with your Skype. Then Dan, Dan, can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me? Now? Can you hear me? We're having a. We're gonna try to reconnect with Dan here. Uh, let, let, let's do this. Um, let, 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 let's get into the topic here about about the book, Eighty Shades of Black, Politics. Another perspective. Wilmer J. Leon the Third is with us today. He's a PhD. Um, tell us a little bit about the book, my friend, while I try to reconnect with Dan Perkins. Sure. The book, uh, Politics: Another Perspective. Uh, commentary and Analysis on Race, War, Ethics, and the American Political Landscape in the Age of Obama is a collection of 80 op-eds that have been published since 2006 in the four categories just listed. The uh, other perspective is a historical perspective. One of the big problems that I see with a lot of analysis that takes place in mainstream American news is current events are rarely described and discussed in the broader historical context in which they exist. So we tend to view a lot of problems as though they have sprung up out of whole cloth instead of understanding the broader historical context in, in which they exist. So what I try to do with a lot of the op-eds that I write is connect the current issue to the broader historical context so people can have a better understanding of how we got to where we are and then understanding that people can have a better understanding of, of solutions that we can employ to uh, to address a lot of these problems well uh, well, uh, uh, go ahead, Jerry, let me ask uh, the, the, Leon a question okay. um, uh, in, in, in a few short words can you say uh, what uh, historical uh, trends uh, brought us to where we are now so we can have an well, it, intelligent con yeah, if we, conversation? Well, in terms of where we are now, for example, if you're looking, if, if, if your question has to do with uh, the election of Donald Trump, we have, in order to understand uh, the election of Donald Trump, we have to see that uh, do, again, Donald Trump did not just spring out of ground uh, whole cloth. Donald Trump is the culmination of a right-wing swing, a conservative swing in our politics, starting uh, with Richard Nixon. Some might even say Barry Goldwater. Um, so, so in order to understand Donald Trump, you've got to understand Goldwater into Nixon, Nixon into Reagan, and now Reagan... Uh, Reagan and Bush into into Donald Trump. So there's a there's a, a conservative mindset that and, and that has also been uh, promulgated, particularly since uh, the mid '70s, with the rise in, with the rise in the religious right. So you're you're saying that essentially the the, the U.S. is a conservative uh, country that, that uh, uh, manifests itself. From Goldwater through to Trump, is that what, what the basic premise is? Uh, yeah, I, I don't think I don't think that's a hard that's a hard point to defend. But what point? Um, so uh, saying that, why, uh, why is um, uh, this detrimental to blacks? Why? Why is the conservative trend that the country has gone in detrimental to African Americans? Correct. Yes. Uh, well, there are a number. Well, we can look at it from a judiciary perspective. We can look in terms of a rise in uh, in in, uh, in incarceration. We can we can look at uh, cut back in social programs and the impact that that's had on education. The impact that that's having on health care. We can look if you if you if you agree that the most um, uh, uh, progressive Supreme Court, as it relates to civil rights and civil liberties in this country, was the Warren Court, and surprisingly, Earl Warren, a former Republican uh, governor of California, appointed by a Republican president, Dwight Eisenhower, 
They gave us some of our most um, progressive uh, uh, civil uh, civil rights and civil liberties uh, decisions in in the history of the Supreme Court. And ever since that court, uh, under under Richard Nixon, starting to chip away uh, at at those uh, at those decisions under. Gerald Ford and, and under um, the the Bushes, and now we look at what's happened with 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 uh, what we fear will happen with the appointments of Donald Trump. We can see a total erosion, an attack on our on our civil liberties. So there are a number of elements, depending on what direction you want to go, that will show that not only has this move to the right been detrimental to the to to African Americans, this move to the right is proving to to be detrimental to all Americans. Yeah, it's interesting. You you said appoint the the appointed of the Donald Trump. Last I looked, he was elected, but uh, uh, that's a no, no, that's a minor point. But but uh, what no, I, I hear said you I say, said I said the civil I said the I was I didn't say Donald Trump was appointed. What I said was Donald Trump's appointment, which really actually was a nomination, to the Supreme Court. I, I was not saying that Donald Trump was appointed. I did okay. not say that. I misunderstood. But, but um, if you're a conservative, you essentially believe in the worth of the individual over the uh, role of government. That is the basic definition of a, a conservative. If, That's uh, true. It, if 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 that being the case, if you say um, that uh, Donald uh, Trump, who's essentially trying to bring back individual liberties, whether they're white, black, orange, or yellow, is, is immaterial to him or or to conservatives in general, the main th- main thing that conservatives. Uh, and I probably, if I put myself, I'd put myself on a conservative side, uh, uh, believe that if you um, protect the individual, any individual, rather than groups, i.e. blacks or Latinos, you're ultimately improving the country. But but yet, if I hear, uh, then I think I'll frame the question. If that being the case, why is why is he detrimental to blacks? Well, because uh, history, first of all, as an African American, understanding the history of Africans in America since uh, we arrived on these shores at Fort Comfort, Virginia, in 19 to today, uh, focusing on the rights of the individual has never been beneficial to the Af- to African Americans or their interests, and and conservatism theoretically or philosophically, yes, has basically two tenets. One is uh, the, the right of the individual, and the other tenet is uh, smaller, the smallest government or, or, or smaller government. And when the rights of Africans in America and later African Americans, uh, smaller government has never worked to our benefit. The only way that African Americans have been able to break the, the shackles of slavery the only way that, the, that African Americans have been able to break the, the prohibitive, restrictive, racist Jim Crow laws in the country was through the uh, courts, through the legislature. So African Americans have always needed government, even though in many instances government first operated against our interests. The only way that African Americans have been able to progress in this country is through and with the benefit of government, which is why... Uh, Republicans now have been engaged in voter suppression, which is why now uh, uh, Republicans have been engaged in voter fraud, which is uh, in order to prevent African Americans from exercising the most fundamental right of what it means to be an American, which is to vote. So, yeah, 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 we, we, yeah, we ger- gerrymander districts th- throughout the uh, congressional districts throughout the, the country to give uh, uh, blacks their, their quote their own congressperson. Um, 
because because the way that the because of the way that the district maps had been drawn historically, they had been drawn to prevent African Americans from ever being in a large enough district to where they could elect uh, their own representatives. Now they even so the so so the so the the way so so the laws the laws that were that were put on books to assist African Americans in doing so they were done because somebody woke up in the middle of the night and decided that this would be a good idea to draw a map they were they were done to prevent or to offset historical ger- gerrymandering to ensure that after Reconstruction, African Americans would not be able to do so. Mm-hmm. And, and now that they're, uh, they're doing that, um, uh, it, you know, it's, it's not a zero-sum equation. If, if you uh, say you're going to do this for the blacks, somebody else is going to suffer. If you're going to do this for why, the... Why is it always... Why, it's, it's very interesting to me that conservatives, particularly white conservatives, love to try to make this out to be in order to be pro-African American or, or in order to take the issues and interests of African Americans uh, into consideration that being pro-me winds up being anti-you. Why very is simple. it? That, very simple, why, very why is it that, that, that that's the uh, first place you. you go? I will answer you. Uh, having come, Please come do. This, okay, I, and I'll, I'll answer it very, uh, this way. If you create laws, which we have, which give preference to blacks in uh, hiring, in, um, in firing, in other things, and do not give the same protections to whites, which you don't, a white cannot claim discrimination in the courts because they were fired for, uh, to put in a black person or a white the cannot, protections as, provided to white America to white Americans is called America. You don't have to have you don't have to put laws on the books in order to assist white Americans. That's called America. That's what this country has was based upon and continues to be based upon. The only reason that you that you needed to have fair employment practices put into law, the only reason you had to have fair housing practices put into law is because the law was written, as in Jim Crow laws, for example, to prevent African Americans from exercising the franchise, to prevent African Americans from buying homes in neighborhoods where they wanted to buy homes. What do you think redlining by banks was all about? The Obama administration has taken that far beyond that by saying... The Obama administration has done next to nothing. You are now... You are now perpetuating a stereotype, and you are telling a flat-out lie. Because if you have studied this or covered that you proclaim to have studied and covered this, you would know better. So you, sir, are either ignorant or you are lying. There is, you have absolutely no evidence to support that position. Oh, uh, I do. Dan, but, but can, gonna, can, uh, can, can you uh, hear after us, After being Dan? called a liar, and uh, uh, I'll, I'll turn it over to Dan. Dan he, he, he's can, better able to handle it. Dan, can you hear us at all? Have, have you fixed, fixed your phone yeah. there, my friend? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I've got yes. you. We, 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 we've got you, okay. and, and Dr. Okay. Don, I'm sure, can hear you, all right. too. I listen with very interesting You're breaking up still, Dan. Uh, you're, 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 well, let, let me, doing the best I can. Not a problem, not, not, not a problem. We'll, 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 we'll hang with you here, my friend. Go okay. ahead. I'll, uh, go ahead, my friend. Okay. First of all, first of all, the re- some of the references are, that our guest has, has brought to the t- table, um, are not, uh, broad enough, uh, in, in its implication. For example, it wasn't the conservative Republicans who passed the Jim Crow laws. It was the Democratic Party. It wasn't conservative Republicans who formed the KKK. It was the Democratic Party. 
the Supreme Court uh, in the 1950s dealt with Democrats trying to stop the civil rights process through the filibuster provision. In fact, it was used more against civil rights by Democrats than at any other time. Next, the Democratic Party, which claims to be the champion of the black community, the government has spent since Lyndon Johnson enacted the war on poverty. The United States has spent $22 trillion specifically on the black community since the war on poverty began. $22 trillion. By reference, $22 trillion is more money we've had spent on the entire wars since the country was founded, starting with the Revolutionary War up into the, de the Department of Defense, the budget today. So you talk about the government and the Republicans. I question you, sir, that the Democratic Party has, in fact, through its policies and practices, disappointed and misled the Democratic Party the Democratic Party has misled black people for decades in this country. And there is a history of racial prejudice in the Democratic Party in the way they act in legislation and how they pass laws and things that they do to oppress black people. Out of this, I agree with you, the, Barack Obama did virtually nothing, not only for black people, he did nothing for people in general. Average household income went down $4,000 under the Obama administration. But the unemployment rate in the black community is higher, dramatically so, than the white community. Yet the president it had has the been power historically. Of the that, that's, not, that's not some new revelation. The, no, but, the, but if you put it as part of wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a couple, a couple of things. First, first of all, first of all, you're trying to turn this. You, 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 uh, first of all, I never, I never said that this was a Democrat versus Republican discussion. I know you. I, I know you that. didn't. No, but you well, talked about now, wait a minute now. Wait, hey, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna straighten you out here because you, you you're being very just disingenuous in, in trying to twist some of the things I said. I know the racist background. Of the Democratic Party. I know the history of the Dixiecrats. I know what Strom Thurmond did. I know about about Ronald Reagan's Southern strategy, which, which Donald Trump uh, copied, uh, full paragraph, page, and book. I understand all of that. But what, and when I made reference to the Republican Party, I specifically said from uh, from Richard Nixon forward. What you're talking about is the Republican Party of the 30s, the 40s, and the 50s. So we've got to be historically accurate and use dates when you want to try and have that kind of conversation with me because that's nothing close to what I said. And okay. now we understand. Now we now we are, wait a minute now I let you talk so let me let me give you the let me set you straight with the rebuttal. Now you talked about the, the 23 trillion dollars that has been invested in the poverty program. That pales in nothing in comparison to what Dr. King talked about. The problem with the poverty program was that it was used by the Vietnam War. And the other thing is, when you look at where that money was spent and how that money was spent, that never ever in the programs that that money was was spent through they were never actually targeted to eradicate poverty in this country that was not and when you go back and you read that legislation and you look at those laws they were never targeted to deal with the structural problems of poverty in this country in fact, Lyndon Johnson said when, the, when they were talking about the legislation, he felt it would help keep the black people in check. Lyndon Johnson didn't believe that the war on poverty was going to free the black people. And speaking of Dr. King, if you go back, and read, you go back and read Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech, and you look oh what God. has happened, you look at what's happened to black people in this country since his speech, and I wrote a piece, commentary, on Constitution.com, raising the question, what would Dr. King think of what, what's been happening and what his, his black brothers and sisters are doing today? I believe that the, that the 
that the war on poverty was the largest single of effort to husband and the father out of the household, black household, and replace them with the government. I believe you get, no, pro- you get no debate with me on that point. I also that's, believe that's that... What, that that's what, wait a minute. That's one of the reasons why I just said that the war on poverty was never designed to deal with the structural causes of poverty in this country. I just said that. And who was in charge when all that was going on? Well, Linda Johnson was the president. The, the, the Democratic Party had control of Congress for 40 See, there years. There you go again. There you go again, trying to make this into a binary Republican and Democratic conversation. I did not say that. I never said I'm, that. I'm, I'm looking at the, the, the facts of what happened, who was in power and charge of the government, when all these to things what point? Then, then to what point? What's your point? My point is that you seem to be talking more about the conservative Republicans from Nixon forward. Yet you, exactly. You don't, because you, don't see, you, you don't seem to be talking about any accountability of the Democratic Party during the same period of time. Because I was talking about the current trend. See, you were, you were probably offline because you weren't able to hear the whole conversation. I was talking about the trend. And of the, the, I was answering a specific question that I was asked about Donald Trump. And what I said was that what we see now in the election of Donald Trump is a culmination of conservative politics, starting with Richard Nixon, some would say Barry Goldwater. That was the answer to the question I was providing. I was not asked to give a history of Democratic and Republican politics and the impact they have had on the African-American community since the beginning of time. That was not the question I was asked. You know, uh, Dan, I'd, I'd like to jump in. I'm listening. And uh, uh, Dr. Leon is saying, in effect, that the the, the the anti-poverty money, all the money we spent uh, uh, since 1964, is, uh, is essentially wasted. Am I correct in that? I didn't say that. You you better run and check the tape. I didn't say that. Well, what, no, what he what he said, Don, was that it wasn't designed to cure the poverty. Well, uh, well, that, that's. Did you, you listen? Yeah. Isn't that, that, what, isn't that what you said? That, yeah, that, I said that, I, I, I said that the I said that the poverty I said the war on poverty was never designed to eradicate the structural causes of poverty in this country. I did not say that what, what, all what of the money the stru- was wasted. I didn't say that. What so is, what is stru- uh, what, Go ahead, Don. What is the structural cause of poverty in this country? In your, in the the, the, your mind. Oh, the, the well, the the fun, the most fundamental element of the structural causes of poverty in this country would have to be racism, because racism is oh is, my is the fundamental element of 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 uh, of the issues in this country. The country was founded on racism, and the country profited from racism, and the country continues to engage in it. Uh, I, uh, Jiggy, I have to uh, uh, sign off. Uh, th- 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 this discussion to me, uh, whenever I hear that, I, I really have to go uh, to the bathroom. Oh, don't, you haven't heard of the, You haven't heard of the Three Fifths Compromise. You haven't heard of the Fugitive Slave Provision. You haven't heard of the fact that slavery was allowed to exist in this country for, I mean, the importation of slaves was allowed to exist in this country for 20 years after the Three Fifths. Uh, you, 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 you're not aware of any of that? I hardly think that's the basis upon which this country was founded or has grown. Well, uh, isn't the Constitution the founding document of the country? Correct. Well, it isn't, but, and aren't those provisions but, but, uh, written I, I, into the founding document of and it's also with a provision with the, that expired uh, sometime in the early uh, 19th century. The, pro- the, the, the provision 
expired, but that does not mean that the mindset and the ideology behind it expired along with it. Um, I'm just going to say this. Whenever I hear that statement, I want to go to the bathroom and puke because it's not true. (laughs) It it, uh, hasn't happened. We are a nation of immigrants. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Ignorance, Ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is bliss. Enjoy yourself. Okay, goodbye. If well, you, that's you, that's that's Don Mazzella. We've, we've got Dan Perkins with us, and Dan, go go ahead and uh, re- re- respond to everything, uh, everything there, my friend. Well, you know, I I I, I say to the gentleman, the Constitution did not uh, provide equal protection for LBGT because it wasn't public at the time. The Constitution. No, that came that came out of the Civil Rights Movement. Okay, but, but but my point is, it wasn't there, and you're saying that slavery, while while not specifically articulated in the Constitution, the way we counted slaves and the way we did things uh, was implied in the Constitution. And so when we had the Fugitive Slave Law, when we had the uh, the other constitutional amendments that dealt with the right of, of all races, including blacks, to be free. Uh, those are the corrective processes that this country has gone through to look at the way it behaved in the past, and we've made those changes in our laws. Does that mean that everybody has agreed? No. Does that mean that every white person loves every black person in this country? No. Does it mean that every black person in this country loves every white person. No. But we are a country that has recognized that we had flaws where there was mistreatment. We changed the laws, and by the nature of who we are as a nation, a nation of assimilation of people from different races and different cultures, we hopefully have made America better. But to continue to serve, to say that today we are no better than we were when the Jim Crow laws were passed, is... Did I say that? Un- yeah, you did. No, I didn't. You, you said you blamed, you blamed the racism... You said that you blamed the racism that this country has on it was on slavery, the Jim Crow laws, and what happened after the war. And I'm saying... Okay, there are a couple, there are a couple things here. There are a couple of things here. First of all, what is the Constitution amendment that abolished slavery in this country? The 13th Amendment. I just said that. And what, does the, and, what does the, and what does the 13th Amendment say? The 13th Amendment says, basically, to paraphrase, slavery shall be uh, abolished except for crimes committed, right? So the fact that... Uh, um, that there was an exception for criminality written into the amendment abolishing slavery is what gave rise to the convict leasing program in the South. So when the thir- when slavery was abolished by the 13th Amendment, it was replaced immediately by the convict leasing system in this country. That's how West Steel made so much money, by using co- black convict slave labor in the South to, to in their steel mills. And if you, you don't have to believe what I say, read Douglas Blackman's book, Slavery by Other Name. Now, after slavery was abolished in this country, after the 14th Amendment was passed in this country, we wound up with what? Jim Crow laws. Every time the United States has taken a step legislatively to try to rectify its horrific racist past, there is backlash in this country by white people and to the detriment of African Americans. Many would tell you that the election of Donald Trump is white backlash to the election of Barack Obama. No, I think the election of Donald Trump was, you're right, partially. There was a backlash. There was a backlash because regardless of being a black man, he was a terrible president. He couldn't make decisions, 
and and the people voted said if if Hillary is going to continue the same policy of ineffective government, we don't want him, and we don't want her. And so, well, the, was uh, was was George Bush a horrible president? Could, could George Bush make decisions? Because Barack Obama made a lot of the same decisions and a lot of the same stuff and followed the same playbook as George Bush. The difference is. Mitch McConnell couldn't stomach the fact that there was a black man in the White House. The Affordable uh, Care Act, the, where did the Affordable Care Act come from? The Affordable Care Act came from the Heritage Foundation. The Affordable Care Act is Romney Care rewritten for the entire country. The only problem and the reason why the reason why Frank Luntz and 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 these other spokespeople for the Republican Party labeled it Obamacare wasn't because the legislation was bad. They just couldn't they just couldn't stomach the fact that it was a black man that got it passed. So you and that's and that's why when now a lot of these Republican uh, senators and congressmen are going back to their districts. They're getting pilloried by their uh, white constituents because all of a sudden their health care is. Why? And so that and so that's that's the yeah. joke. The only thing, the only problem I have with Obamacare is not the care; it's Obama. But, but the Obamacare, Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act is not affordable. And the people who are most adversely affected by the inability to get insurance to pay for it are black people. And it was the Democratic <laughs> Party. What? Where do you get Hillary. your numbers from? Do you have any data to support that ridiculous statement? Do you have uh, any have data a, to I, support I, that? I look at what's happened to the cost of... The I'll take that. Since you're not giving me any data, I'll take that as a no. You don't have any data to support that statement. Excuse me. Excuse me. That's an inappropriate assumption because you asked me where I was calling from. I would, if you would have asked me that, do you have access? I just did. I said. I just said. Do no, you have no, any data to support no. the statement? You didn't ask me if I had access to any of my data. If you would have asked me where are you calling from, and I would have told you in my car. No, I don't carry the data in my car. Had I been on the phone on with my computer access and my historical files, I would be in a better position to answer your question. But because I can't answer your question because I don't have the data in front of me and it's not in my brain, doesn't mean I don't have any data. And for you to assume that I'm lying because I don't have the data, you're not understanding the environment in which I was asked to participate in the call. I didn't say you were lying because you didn't have any data. I didn't say that. You said I, I said didn't because know the data. I had no facts. That, that, doesn't, that doesn't mean you I didn't say you were a liar. I just said that, that I must take the fact that you can't recite me any data as a, as a no. That's what I said. And, I, and I'm, saying, I'm saying that is an, an equally okay. bad assumption to assume okay. that all okay. of the problems are racist. Hillary, Clinton, the said, Hillary, Hillary mm -hmm. Clinton said, if you vote for Donald Trump, you are a racist. And Hillary she was wrong. Clinton, Hillary Clinton said so that... So take that up with Hillary Clinton. She was the standard bearer she was of the wrong. Democratic Party. She wasn't? You, once again, once again... You're taking this back, trying to make it a binary Republican Democratic conversation. I never took it there. I didn't I'm take talking, it there. I'm, I, but I, I took, I'm taking it there because. Oh, okay. Okay, then that's fine. Okay. Because I believe that because a person may be a conservative, you have branded them as being racist. And I'm I have not. I have done no such thing. I have run the tape. I have not said that. And I would appreciate it if you could focus and stay in tune to what I'm saying and stop making these ridiculous references or inferences so that you can feel comfortable in 
supporting your ridiculous premise. I did not say that. Did you not say that this started probably with Barry Goldwater? I said that the, that the election of Donald Trump is a culmination of the development of radical conservative thought in this country, starting with Barry Goldwater. I said that. Did he win? Did who win? Barry Goldwater. No. But that's where, the, that's where it started. That's where it started. I said, starting with Barry Goldwater. And that's where it, that's where modern, if you, that's where, according to a lot of the literature, modern conservatism grew out of the speeches and the writings and the politics of Barry Goldwater. Modern and, conservatism. Okay, so then are you, by the same token, are you also, would you consider the possibility of the accuracy of a statement said that the modern civil rights movement began with Martin Luther King? The modern, the modern civil rights movement uh, grew out of the Montgomery bus boycott. Yeah, I agree with that. So the, the, the civil rights movement, which it was a reaction to uh, separate but equal and all those things that were happening, not only in the North but in the South, the, the beginning of, you could talk about Selma, the bridge in Selma, you could talk about a lot of different things. But mm -hmm. for all intents and purposes, the leader of the, of the modern civil rights movement is Martin Luther King. And he talked about, as I said earlier in his I Have a Dream speech, he talked about his goals and what he was hopeful for for his people <laughs> coming forward. You don't agree he did that? Well, I, oh, the, 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 you, the chuckle you got from me was because I, I love it when conservatives use the I Have a Dream speech because they always go to the end of the speech and they ignore the beginning of the speech. What was the beginning of the speech about? The beginning of the speech was an indictment of America. Remember the, remember the, the, the check that was cashed and came back marked insufficient funds? Right. That was, the be, that was the be, and what was he talking about? America, because of its racist history, not living up to its full potential as a country. So I love it when conservatives pull out that speech because they love to go to, I, I, I. in fact, why was the speech called I Have a Dream? Why did Dr. King have to have the dream in the first place? He had to have the dream in the first place because our reality was and continues to be a horrific nightmare. That's why he had to have the dream. Uh, and I, I don't disagree with that, I, I, but I want to ask you a question. If, if if in the beginning of the speech he talks about the check came back insufficient funds, mm -hmm. what, would Dr. what would Dr. King say later of how this country has treated his people after they spent $22 trillion? He would go back to the speech, uh, uh, um, Time to Break Silence, I opposed the war in Vietnam, and he would talk about militarism, capitalism, and racism, and he would say that the money that could have and should have been spent in bringing equality in this country has been uh, used, as he said, like some demonic uh, suction tube and sucked out of this country and gone into the military-industrial complex, which... Uh, uh, President Dwight Eisenhower warned us against. Yeah, but that's you're what not, he said. But, but that's what he said. Well, uh, possibly, but but I think that there is another another part of that that you're not recognizing, and that is, okay. yes, we spent money, we spent money in Vietnam, we spent money in in Afghanistan and Iraq and and all this stuff, and I said to you that under the uh, uh, under the Johnson law, this country in 50 years has spent, spent $22 trillion on the war in poverty. In addition to the money that we spent on the wars, whether you like wars or not, but 
we spent more money in 50 years on the war in poverty than we spent in all of the history of this country on, war, on the cost of war. And what I'm saying is that we spent $22 trillion, and I believe that if Dr. King was here, by the way, I, was, I am one of those white people who worked in the civil rights movement in the 70s um, in, in desegregating the Columbus Public Schools. But I, I think Dr. King would be very disappointed that $22 trillion of a check was given to his people, and he would seriously question, what did my people get for the $22 trillion? And I would say to you that you are funda your premise is fundamentally flawed because the check or no portion of the check was, quote, unquote, given to his people. With, and, and he would say, because, and I know he would say it, because he did say it, that uh, that the that that the, that the war on poverty programs were never designed to deal with the fundamental systemic issues that were causing poverty in this country. Have you read the book? Where do we go from here? Chaos or community? Written by Dr. King. That was the last book he published before he was assassinated. Where right. in it he says a number where in it he says a number of things, such as the white liberal has more in common with the members of the Klan than it does with black people. Why? Because the white community in this country has never been focused on freedom that they have they have that, that white liberals have mourned the lash that the African American has been subjected to. They have mourned the oppression that African Americans have been subjected to, but they have never been fully vested in freedom for black people in the country. That's Dr. King, sir. I That's where we go from here in the community. I'm not making that up. I'm, I'm not saying you are, but what I'm saying is what you're ignoring is that Dr. King was not around to see the trillions of dollars that were spent supposedly on his people. He was gone. It wasn't there. And so what I'm, I'm wondering, why has the, if the black community, you're saying, if, and you correct me if I'm wrong, that the black community did not reap any benefits from the $22 trillion that was spent over the last 50 years. I have not yeah. said that. I would never say something as, uh, as, uh, as broad broad as that. I would never use the word any because as soon as I do and someone provides one example to contradict that, then I'm wrong. I didn't say that, that there has not been any progress. There has been progress. But it hasn't been nearly uh, as 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 great of, of of progress as there could or should be, because again, the most of the efforts at eradicating poverty in this country, whether it's whether it's been uh, uh, the, the the building of uh, of projects in this country to to house uh, the impoverished, uh, they have. The, the benefits of those programs, more times than not, have not gone to the structural problems to resolve the issues. A lot of people got paid. A lot of people made a lot of money. Most of those people were not black people. When you look at the administrative costs of a lot of these programs, when you look at the overhead of a lot of these programs, when you look at who ran a lot of these programs, it wasn't black people in this country. It was white people. So, if we if we roll forward to another program that was designed to put people back to work, the quote shovel ready jobs for eight hundred and seventy billion dollars, and it never happened. You just defined exactly where we figured out where the money went. It went to people's salaries. It went to administrators. It went to union people. It was squandered and never really benefited people. And it, am I, again, am I correct? Are you saying that much of the $22 trillion that was spent in that 50-year period, 
most of it, some of it, a lot of it, not much of it, made its way into the black community to improve the quality of life of black people in this country? Uh, because I don't have the data for those programs in front of me, I will just simply say too much of it did not. And 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 it was. And, and let, in fact, let me give you let me give you one simple example. When you look at the Black Panther Party for self defense, and you look at and you look at their preschool program. You look at their after-school program. You look at their breakfast program. You look at their health care program. Those programs were designed in the community. They were designed by the community. They were designed for the community, and they were run by the community. And what happened to those programs? They got shut down by the government. Why? On the health care side, because because. Physicians in this country and the government did not want to see black people getting free health care in this country. That's how the pro that's how the program got shut down in, in Harlem, New York. Okay. Now, I, now the government copied the uh, the and after school program. That's how we got the Head Start program in this country. The Head Start right. program in this country was started by the Black Panther Party for Self Defense. That okay. that is one of that is one example of a program that has done a lot of good for a lot of people in this country. And what does Donald Trump want to do? Well, and, and starting with Ronald, starting from Ronald Reagan forward, what what have conservatives been wanting to do and doing? Cutting, cutting, cutting programs such as Head Start. Okay, we, we only have a few minutes left, and there's one area that I would like to have a little bit of dialogue with you. Because sure. I would, be, I would be very interested in your perspective as a black man, a, a person who I believe is a, has a passion for his black activism. Uh, I, I was on the Central Ohio Civil Rights Council, which brought okay. the class action suit against the Columbus Board of Education to desegregate okay. the Columbus Public Schools. What and it year was, was that? A, uh, probably in 1976. Okay. Okay. okay I'm, I'm an old guy. So, um, and I, okay. I, got invo I got involved in it because uh, I believe that my faith told me that I had to get involved because it was an important issue. And the tension in our town as the trial was taking place was unbelievable. And... Mm -hmm. I work with major news media to try and keep the tension down. Mm -hmm. So finally, the, finally the, the court decided and said that the school system had to be segregated, uh, unsegregated, and they had to put in a busing program, the court had to approve it, and all those things that we all went through right. in the 60s and 70s and 80s. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Now, uh -huh. I, I want to roll, roll forward to 2017. Okay, and I have I want I want to find out from a uh, an intelligent, educated black person why are there more and more education of higher learning where the black students want to be segregated not only in dorms, classes, and cafeterias away from the rest of the people in the college. What is happening that the black people are asking for? segregation again and you tell me what did I fight for 50 years ago if the black community well, let's start with, we okay. don't want it okay okay wait a minute let's 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 start let's start with I mean you you've asked a very complex question uh, that has a, I think that has a number of, uh, of, of socioeconomic elements that contribute to it but and not and not knowing the history of what happened in Ohio but I do have some broader understanding of what happened with busing and education in the 70s and the busing the busing idea first of all was a was a bad idea because again it did not get to the root cause of the problem of educational failure in the country instead of busing black children from the homes 15 20 30 45 50 minute bus rides away from their homes what you what they should have done was invested 
in the schools in those neighborhoods to be sure to to ensure that the uh, 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 assets and the and the tools in the schools in the black neighborhoods were the same and if not better than the than the, than the tools and the, and, and the equipment in the white neighborhoods. Right now, now another problem that we have seen with uh, housing programs with 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 education programs is not only black people doing this but white people doing this as well the a big problem with resegregation in this country has to do with housing patterns and the fact that people just seem to naturally gravitate to live around people that look like them and that's not a racist uh, uh, I, birds of a feather do seem to flock together. Now, now, um, but 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 one of the big problems that we have is when people of other ethnicities do want to move into other neighborhoods, tensions do arise. We still find that there's redlining by banks, so that black people wanting to move into some white neighborhoods will at least the banks will try to charge them a higher interest rate because of redlining uh, that is still being done by banks. But now to your question about, about black students in, um, I think you were referring to majority white um, uh, uh, colleges and universities. No, I'm talking specifically about many of the public universities in California and in Connecticut and New York which are racially diverse colleges, but the, the, but the black students have decided that they want to have s segregated dorms, classes, and meals. Well, I'd have to look at the literature that is addressing those particular um, quests. But I, I will say to you, if you just look at the sheer numbers and the percentages of African Americans that are that are, and I, I'm originally from California, African Americans that are in the University of California system or are in the California state system, and you uh, you look at the percentages of those students compared to students that are of other eth eth ethnicities, they are uh, still very very small numbers. So in terms of of again, birds of a feather want to flock together. And they want to coalesce around their commonalities, their common interests for support and encouragement because what we find in a lot of those institutions, they are, you, you use the term uh, integrated, which they are uh, by number, but, when, but, but they are not necessarily the most welcoming uh, institutions, and I say this having gone to the University of California Davis School of Law and know that I was approached by the dean of the school and asked one day, are you really comfortable here? Are you sure this is really the place for you? Dean, what do you mean? Why are you asking me that? Well, I, I just want to be sure that you're comfortable. Well, why would not be comfortable? What's giving me the idea that I'm not comfortable? Just want to be sure you're comfortable. And I know where that question came from. I know where that, that, that question came from. To, how long ago was that question? Uh, that, was, that was 1982. That's right. But we're, we're talking, I mean, we're, we're talking, I'm talking about today, 2017. I, I'm trying to change, but the ideologies have not. But what I'm, what I'm trying to understand, Doctor, is that... Um, this is spreading across the country. It started about Thank Donald a year, Trump. No, it started about a year ago. <laughs> Thank and Donald Trump. He was he wasn't even running a year ago. I mean, what, what do you mean? Yeah. Donald Trump? How is it thanks to Donald Trump? Well, when we look president. at the, when we he look at the, the when we we can tie we can we can tie the rise in. Uh, in hate crimes, we can tie the rise in, uh, we'll just say, sensitivity 
to the rhetoric of Donald Trump. So are you saying he's responsible for the shooting in Chicago? No, that's a separate issue. Oh, it doesn't doesn't fit. Okay. Well, all right. So, Jim, if you're, talk, we, if you're we, talking about if you're talking about the rise, if you're talking about the the the, the shootings on the south side of Chicago within the African American community, right? Oh, a totally separate issue. And, and I, I find it I find it laughable when 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 people talk about, and I'm not saying you're doing this, but your question just prompted this thought that when 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 the when, when people in the African American community are outra outraged at police shootings, and the first thing people want to come back and say is, well, what about Chicago? Why aren't you outraged about what's happening in Chicago? What about what the black community is doing to itself in Chicago? I, I, or Philadelphia that's a, that's or Baltimore. Issue. Or Philadelphia yeah, well, that's a totally – see, that, that, that issue has, has much less to do with ethnic, ethnicity and more to do – with socioeconomic issues such as poverty, such as um, such as uh, hopelessness, such as the lack of job opportunity and poor educational systems, Irish people did it to themselves in the in the in the in the ghettos in this in the Irish ghettos in this country. Italian people did it to themselves in the Irish ghetto in the Italian ghettos in this country in the history of this country. This is that's not that that type of Feeding upon oneself is not relegated or specially uh, uh, found within the African American community. That's what poor people do. That's what people. That's what hopeless people do. That's what people without jobs and 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 poor life expectancy. That's what they do. That's not what black people do. So when when and I, I Jim, are you still there, Jim? Or are you yep, on the I'm, air? We just talked. I'm, I'm 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 just I'm just. Uh, sitting here listening to you guys have this discussion. Yes, keep, keep I, I have to go in a little bit, but uh, no problem. I want to go back. No to, I want to go. I want to go back to your issue of of uh, of Donald Trump. Uh, I saw I saw a report this morning in Wall Street Journal where several professors at leading universities went back and analyzed the election results, and they found that that Mrs. Clinton didn't carry near the percentage of the black community that Barack Obama did. In fact, she didn't right. carry near, near the percentage of historical white Democratic like like uh, um, her husband, Bill. But here's my question. Yeah. What I'm trying to figure out, when Donald Trump was in Detroit... And as he was going around in the in the inner city, and he made mm -hmm. the statement, which I thought was a terrific statement for the black people. For 50 years, you've lived under the 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 war on poverty, and you lived under the mm -hmm. oppression of the, the Democratic Party. What do you have to lose to vote for me? What do you have to lose? We had everything to lose. We have but everything you know, to lose. Wait, you're telling me they don't have, have anything. They don't have jobs, we they don't have, have income, they depend on the government. Well, what do they have to lose? Why am I going to turn to a racist to help me? Why am I going to turn to a white guy that tells me that Mexicans come across this country and, uh, and rape and pillage and bring drugs, and he's lying about that? Why am I going to turn to a guy that says he can, quote, by using his words, grab a woman by her pussy and that's okay? Why am I going to turn to a fool like that and ask him for anything? Because the people that you've been asking for for 50 years haven't delivered. But that doesn't mean that i got to turn from one idiot to another. What's I your choice? Another What's idiot. Your choice? I'm another idiot. idiot. What's your choice? Why am I, why am I going to turn to a guy who was, who was convicted in federal court for housing discrimination? Why am I going to turn to a guy that started supposedly a university and stole from his students? Why am I going to turn to a fool like that? Why would I turn to Hillary Clinton who took hundreds of millions? Well, that's of a dollars. different question. But see, that's no, but a she, different question. She wanted Hillary black Clinton people to vote for her, 
and 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 African Americans in great numbers were smart enough not to because Hillary Clinton was a dog of a candidate. The Democrats did the Democrats failed miserably because they first of all they took the African American vote for granted. They expected yep. that when President Obama came off the campaign trail that we would run to President Obama, and I'll use this failed analogy because it isn't true. Don't do that, but that is the, that is the, the phrase that is used. Um, that 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 we would follow him blindly, and because Barack Obama said vote for Hillary Clinton, that we were going to do that. Wrong. Wrong. She ran a failed campaign. The Democrats had no message. Not only did the Democrats have no message, they couldn't figure out a message and they couldn't stay on message. Hillary Clinton spent more time telling us the obvious, that Donald Trump is a fool. Donald Trump told us that every day. We didn't need Hillary Clinton to tell us, and I'm not speaking on behalf of African Americans, I'm just talking about the average voter. We didn't need Hillary Clinton to tell us that Donald Trump was a fool. Donald Trump told us that every damn day. What we needed Hillary Clinton to do was explain to us what she was going to do, and she failed miserably in doing that. Hillary Clinton was a failed candidate. Did she, did she not tell us to defend the fact that she, when, it, when she was accused as being a crook, and when the, when the director of the FBI stood up and after the 4th of July weekend and articulated all the things that she had done wrong, but he still wouldn't indict her. Uh, I would think that that would be a a, a, a a terrible message to the black community. Whitey gets away with it. Only this time, Whitey gets away with it with hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. What's that got to do with the black community? Because the black community, maybe the reason why Hillary was a failed candidate, maybe the black community realized that she was a liar and a thief. Well, not only and the black community, but, 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 but wait a minute, now. but time out, time out, listen, in spite of her flaws, Donald Trump lost the election by three million votes. Well, that's not three, There were three again. million, there were three, and I'm rounding my numbers up. It's like 2.7 million. There were, there right. were three million more people in this country that voted for Hillary Clinton than voted for Donald Trump. And so what does that mean? It means that by the popular vote, there were more. It means what it means. That, that in spite of her being what she is, and in spite of her failing as she did, and in spite of Donald Trump, and, and because of Donald Trump being the big fool that he is, almost three million people did vote for Hillary Clinton. You can debate that number. That's what that sure means. You, sure you can. You can debate that number because it's an irrelevant statement. No, it's not. There's no, 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 no. There is no relevance to what you said because the constitutional process in this country says the president... I, did not, I did not say that Donald Trump isn't the president. I did no, not no. say that Donald... I said that three million more people voted for him than voted for him. That's what I said, and that yeah, but, is true. Yes, but what you're not saying is... What you mean? That, no, what you're not saying, if you want to talk about the popular vote, if you look at the margin that you, which she won in California and in New York, and you, and, you look at, and you look at the plurality that she won the popular vote, which was irrelevant, if you take out that huge plurality in New York and California... She would have lost oh, see, now you game. want to take numbers away. See, I, 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 no, I don't no, no, get no. it. I, I, said, I said that this statement is irrelevant because that's not how we elect presidents. I did not so say I, anything about electing the president. What I said was, for as failed of a candidate as Hillary was, for as much of a crook as you say she is, and I don't, and I don't really 
issue with that statement. I just don't think that the proper charges were, were discussed because people need to ask the Clinton Foundation what happened to the millions of dollars that went to Haiti. That's that's what people need to ask. But that's that's a separate issue. My my point is I, I know that, that is. I know that is, but I'm just saying if you want to talk about her being a crook, then talk about how much money they stole in terms of what the money went to Haiti. But the, my my only point is for as big of a crook as she allegedly is, and I have to use the word allegedly because she hasn't been charged and convicted of anything, and uh, that Donald Trump still lost the popular vote by 3 million votes. That's my point. That's yeah, a fairly but, simple point. That's all. Yes, but it's, it's, it's irrelevant because the, election, the outcome of the election wasn't determined based on popular vote. If Didn't if say that it was. was. But, but what you're, the, the people, maybe not yourself, but there are a lot of people who say she should have been president because she won the popular vote. And, and I the didn't say that. To the, well, let me finish. Based on the final election results, Donald Trump won 92% of all the counties in the United States. 92%. Okay. Hillary, That's Hillary fine. won eight. So That's her, fine. Mandate, her mandate was highly concentrated. My point is, is that is that I believe that when Donald Trump said, what do you have to lose, there were black people who said, not much. And they oh, that's true. Some of them decided to vote for Donald Trump. That's true. And whether you like him or not as a person, whether you think he's a crook like Hillary, the point is we have a series of laws in this country that determines how people are going to be selected for president of the United States. We live within those if laws. You, if, we don't, if we don't like those laws, there's a constitutional process. Two, actually, two constitutional process. One is through an amendment, and the other one is an article. Through, article through a convention. Right. Yeah, but, but we don't even have to go that far. Because if, if you have followed the work of Greg Pallast, and you understand what uh, Chris Kobeck, the Republican Attorney General in Kansas, did with the cross-check program, uh, and, you, and you look at that data, and that data is good data. Donald Trump didn't win Arizona. Donald Trump didn't win Michigan. Donald Trump didn't win Pennsylvania. He didn't win, he didn't win North Carolina. If you, if, uh, so if, if we, we, all we have to do is use the laws on the books, Mm -hmm. and hold people accountable for violating those laws, and you look at the, at the data from the cross-check program, Donald Trump lost Arizona. Arizona! So why, why didn't the people at the cross-check program contest the election? You know, if I honestly, if I had the, I have been asking that question forever. I, I don't know why the gutless Democrats have not followed. They are, they are so much more focused on the open discussion of Russians hacking the election. You don't have right. to look at the Kremlin, and you don't have to look at Russians. You just have to look at Kobach and the Republicans, and you will find out what happened to your election. But, but well, they want to chase this red herring called right. Vladimir Putin and and uh, and and he stole our election. That is the biggest crock of crap since a crock of crap was invented. <laughs> right, and and and, and, the, and the and and the Democratic leadership, including Hillary, Fail. cannot talk Fail. miserably. Can, cannot talk about the election without a butt in it, and and there should be no butt. Hillary was the was the was the standard bearer for the party. And she lost. Period. Admit it. Get over it and get going on. Jim, I've the not only six the, not, the not, only not that I can problem. add to that conversation is the cross check program. And 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 short of that, you are absolutely right. She was a yeah. failed candidate, and the Democratic Party operated as a failed party. I don't. It, I don't. I, you will not debate for me on that point. Yes, yeah, she she basically felt she was entitled to the presidency and you're uh, correct 
and she she ran a campaign like she didn't really care. I mean, the statement that she said I should be up by fifty points. I mean, it, it just showed the arrogance of the person. And uh, I don't. You, you won't get any debate from me on that. Okay, Jim, I go. No, not a problem. As do I. Not not a problem. Thank you, gentlemen, and uh, check out Dan Perkins hey. online, and yeah. also. Uh, Check out yep. Wilmer Leon. Hey, yes. Dan, yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank Jim. you, guys. Yes, yes. Before we let you go, what what do you have for us? I I just want to give you an update on songs and stories for soldiers. Okay, go ahead. Real, and I'm out, Jim. No Call problem. me anytime. No problem. Th th thank you, Wilmer. Appreciate so, it. Dan, last week, go ahead and give us the details here. Last week, last week when we talked, we were at 485 stations. Remember that? Yes, yes. That are running the PSA. Yes, indeed. As of last night, as of last night, one thousand. Amazing. One thousand stations across America and growing are running our public service announcement announcement on women in the military and uh, and our our foundation. So we're just overwhelmed at the response. And thank you for staying with me for so long. I'm sorry I was so winded. Not a problem. Not a problem. I, I appreciate it, and uh, we will talk to you next week. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate it, sir. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Uh, Dan Perkins, Don Mazzella, and uh, that is that. That wraps it up from a uh, amazing, amazing.